Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Poddle Mania, and boy have we got some good guests on the show for you today. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Sorry guys, wrong show, wrong show. That was actually about Poddle Mania, which is our podcast channel. You can go to iTunes and Stitcher and Google Podcasts and things like that, that's a photography and video podcast. Wrong show. Let's get into the real show. So we've had a request asking us what's in our podcasting kit. So that's what we're going to go through. We're going to go through some different pieces of equipment, some different setups for different environments, different conditions, and different amounts of people. So let's get rolling into that right now. So today we're going to have a look at my podcasting kit and that's going to be made up of my travel kit, my studio kit, and we're going to look at mixing desks, audio interfaces, digital recorders, microphones, headphones, and all the kind of things that make that up. So let's get into that and we'll go and take a look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at my mixing board first, which is what I generally use in studio, even though you can take it with you, but it does need a power supply. Okay, so I use the Yamaha MG10XU. Um, it's got four XLR inputs on this one. It does have other inputs as well, uh, which we don't really use. I like the microphones to be used as uh, XLRs. So we've got our four inputs, and we can control all the lows, the mids, and the highs with all our control knobs here. So it refines our audio before it goes into our um, editing software. It's a good unit to have, but I find that sometimes this can be a little bit too much, and it can be a little bit big and bulky. Obviously, there's lots of other brands on the market. It does have a Phantom 48 volt power button on here, which is good for condenser microphones because they need Phantom power, whereas dynamic microphones don't need the Phantom power. So that's something to look out for. The only thing I don't like about this is even though you've got four XLR inputs, is that it actually only records it into one single audio channel. So if you've got four guests or three guests and, you, and yourself as host, you're only getting one audio channel out of this when you come to edit it, edit it in your software. If you want them to be multi-track, you need to buy a multi-track version of this so that it splits your audio. But it's got some good features in it. It's got some compression dials, but only on the first two channels. Uh, and it's also got 24-bit, 192 kilohertz uh, sound quality, audio quality in there, which is, you know, recording standards for music. It's way beyond what we ever need. Uh, it has got some special effects in there, room echo, audio, other voice effects and instrument effects you can put in there if you're doing live streams or live podcasting. That can be quite good if you're doing live sound effects. Apart from that, I think it can be a bit overkill. So let's look at a couple other options. Can you pass me the sound bag, please? You just can't get a staff nowadays, can you? Idiots, idiots. So let's take a little look at an audio interface. This one's quite a small unit. This will take two XLR microphones. It will take a 6.3 jack in the front of there as well. Uh, this is a Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD. This is a little bit more portable. It's USB powered, so you don't need a main supply, which means you can run this straight into your laptop if you're recording into a laptop. So that's awesome. It also has phantom power on the back, and you have your own mic input volume controls for independent control, headphone output control, and mixer controls as well. The preamps in this thing are absolutely beautiful, and this unit is a lot cheaper than buying a mixing desk. And in all honesty, I kind of prefer this kind of thing because of its size. If you've got more guests than just two of you, you can buy them with four XLR inputs. That's the 404 version. But one of my good purchases, I love this thing, and the audio quality out of this is absolutely awesome. So I'd recommend one of these over my mixing desk, in my personal opinion, for me. And now moving on to one of my favorite pieces of equipment, which is truly portable because of its size and its functionality, makes this a real winner for me in terms of our podcasting, and portable podcasting too, on location. That is the Zoom H6 recorder. You notice I said recorder there because it does record directly into the unit onto an SD card, whereas the other two that I've just mentioned are only audio interfaces stroke mixing desks. This unit is superb. We can take up to four XLR microphones in there and it'll take a 6.3 jack as well. 
We have four individual volume input controls for our mics. We have padding on there. We can switch the mics on and off on the front. We have an LCD display uh, with all our audio volume levels in there, which we can set from here. And the joy with this is that it comes in a case with other microphone attachments. So if you have no microphones, you can use the XY mic for doing audio that way. It's not the best quality for sure, but you just clip it on the top. You can clip other microphones on the top of this as well. In fact, you can even clip an additional attachment on there, which will take another two XLR microphones with individual volume input control. So six XLR mics all together if you need them. The joy with that is they're all individual multi-tracks. So when you pull them into your audio recording, audio recording software, it means that you can edit them individually. So if you've got people with different volume strengths or different voice strengths or different microphones, it means you can balance your levels on input, but it means you have those audio tracks to cut those out later on as separate tracks. This thing is awesome. The quality is amazing. It runs off batteries or you can just run it. If you have got a computer, you can run it off a USB from your laptop, or you can use it as an interface where it will record straight into your recording software without recording to the SD card. So this has got to be one of my favorites because the preamps in it are just amazing. Now, it is a little bit more expensive than the Behringer Euphoria. Of course it is, it does a lot more. So overall, this is probably one of my favorite pieces because it's just so universally brilliant. I mean, it's an interface. It's a standalone recorder. You don't need a laptop. You don't need a computer for it. You can record straight into the SD card. You can run it from a power bank if you've got a power bank through the USB. So if you don't want to, but the batteries last forever on this anyway. Uh, this newer one, the, H, the H6 compared to the H5 has better preamps. It has better battery life. And not only that, without the microphones on top, it's pocketable. <laughs> pocketable guys, huh? If you wear a big coat with big deep pockets, I mean, Come on, it's not that small, but almost. So with the Zoom H6, you can buy it on its own or you can buy it as a kit. If you buy it in a kit, you get it in a nice little hard case. It comes with its little microphone uh, muffler that goes on top of the XY mic. You also get this other mic in there as well with an independent volume control, your cables, everything you need. All in all, awesome piece of kit. I know what you're gonna say, I know what you're gonna say. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute, stop the tape, he's in a different location, he's wearing a different shirt. What the hell's going on here? I can tell you what's going on. Uh, we filmed all the footage for this episode and we were going through the editing process and all of a sudden we had a lot of clips. Typically just the microphone part uh, were corrupt. So we didn't know that until we'd packed the set down and packed away. And it was the next day when we were going through the editing process and we found that we're now missing some footage. So here I am, I'm back again, and we're about to rerun the footage, but we're in a different location, so we're going to just drop this in the middle. So if you're wondering why this is in a different, different scene, and uh, I've got a different shirt on, that's exactly why. Right, so back into it, microphones. You've got your audio interfaces, you've got your options, you've got your audio recorder on your Zoom H6. Now we need something to record into them with. And then we're going to go into the microphones that we have in our kit bags or in our studios. So first off, you've got some differences of microphones. The main two are condenser microphones and dynamic microphones. For what we use, and it's not that expensive to be honest, welcome our little condenser mic. No, it's not. It's a dynamic mic. Sound man, correct me. It's a dynamic microphone. Tell me. It is a dynamic microphone. You see? I knew I was right. We use uh, these little Samsung Q2Us. Um, in Europe and the UK, we have these. Uh, if you're you know, like the U in the US, you'd have the Audio Technica 2100s. Um, same sort of thing, same sort of price bracket. Both really good run of the mill mics. Not your top end, not your low end either, but they are fairly robust, fairly bulletproof, and they're little workhorses. So we have a few of these in our kit boxes, and they do a pretty good job. Now, the benefit of these. Uh, they are XLR connection, uh, which is a good thing. They can go into our audio interfaces, mixing desk, and our Zoom H6, but they're also USB. So if you don't have an interface, an audio recorder, and you just want to be a one-man band with your laptop, then you can USB this one straight into your laptop and record straight into there from here. So you've got the best of both worlds. And the good thing is you can also plug your headphones straight into this as well. We've got a headphone jack on the bottom here. So we've got three connections here. 
XLR, USB and headphone port. And you've got a little volume, volume control on the bottom here for your headphone volume. So that's pretty cool. Very cost effective. In the UK, about 60, 70 pounds, I think, for this. Comes in a kit with an XLR lead, a USB lead, a little stand mount as well. Um, and this one's different. So we'll go through that now. But the good thing with this is, if you're doing an interview over Skype, then you can plug your USB into your computer so that your guest can hear you on the other end of Skype. But if you then wanted to record your feed directly out of that separate to say a Zoom H6, you can still connect through XLR to your Zoom H6 and it will still record your audio separately as a separate channel. Best of both worlds. So that's pretty good. The quality of these is not as good as some uh, other dynamic microphones like the Shure SM7B, which is just awesome. We'll probably put those in our kit bags later on for our podcasting. But at the moment, these are damn good workhorses. Shure SM58s, Audio-Technica AT2100s, all very similar. There's a lot of microphones to choose from. And the, the thing is, is picking which one is best for your voice. That's the only thing I can say. Different voices have different effect with different microphones. So if you can trial them out, Trial some out to see which one suits your voice and your environment or your purpose the best. So they do come with a little uh, wind filter that goes on here, little windsock, which is good, little black cover, which you'll see. But on here, I have mine in its own little shock mount. Takes out the vibrations of the microphone. So if I've got a little desk mount like this, this is an additional one, doesn't come in the box. We can put these on the table and that takes the vibrations from anybody leaning on the table that might come through your mic. Uh, quite an important thing or you get lots of scratches and knocks and noises and then I use a, a pop filter on the front of this just clips over the top just to remove some of those plosives or your peas and yes to try and cut those down a little bit okay so that's it I mean basically with those um, there's many options and many options of those I've got some variants which you do carry as well this is also a Samson uh, co2 pencil mic this is a condenser microphone difference being this needs phantom power the uh, Q2U doesn't require phantom power, okay? So this will need phantom power, so you need a, uh, a, f a phantom power supply of some sort. Obviously the user interfaces, they all have them built in and so does the Zoom, but if you haven't got them, you'll have to get a separate one for this. This is a slightly different cardioid pattern on this, but I really like the warm tone of these compared to the Q2Us. Q2Us have a slightly higher top end, but I like the warmth of these. Um, personal preference again, but these are cheap, about 90 pounds for a kit of two, okay? Really good. And then of course we've got other types of shock mounts like the boom arm on here, which is desk mounted. And you can see I've got a Samsung Q2U on here with the wind filter on it and my pop filter as well. Uh, these are really good if you're in static positions and stationary for that. And of course, you know, you can even use things like, you know, a little lav mic like I've got here for doing this video, as goes into a Rode Filmmaker kit, video kit, Rode video mic. It's not a video mic. What is it? A uh, film kit. It's a Rode film kit. So I've got a transmitter and a receiver for my camera, but you can even use these. You know, if you've got these, you can record podcasts with those. They're quite discreet as well. Uh, the only thing is, just remember, if you take a trip to the bathroom, you've got to turn that damn thing off or everybody's going to hear everything you're doing. And that's a big no-no. Now, one thing with some dynamic microphones, and the Samsung Q2U is no exception. Oh, little swiveling going on there. It's got a little nut there you can do it on because you can swivel these out the way to get your mic out. Um, one thing with some of these condenser mics is that the preamps in them are actually quite low. Um, so your volume levels end up being quite low. So why don't you just turn up the volume, I hear someone say. Why don't you just turn up, turn up the volume? <laughs> Oh, this show's great, isn't it? Why don't you turn up the volume? Because if you just turn up the volume of the input gain on your microphone, it means you're also increasing all the ambient room noise that you've got in your recording. So any other noises, not now that you start introducing a bit of hiss into your microphones. So something I use, and there's a couple different versions of this, this is called a fat head. Did he just call me a fat head? He did, didn't he? He called me a fat head. No, he called you a fat head. Okay, it's a pre-amplifier. So it's almost like a pre-amplifier for your pre-amplifier, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but these basically plug straight in the bottom of my microphone, and then my XLR cable plugs into the back of that. What this does is it boosts my gain, input gain on my microphone, by plus roughly around 27 dB. So it means I can turn my input volumes down on my audio recorder, but it gives me a much cleaner feed without the ambient room noise, and it means I can keep my input volume levels low, but they're preamped and boosted. So it gives me better audio and better signal. 
This is a fat head. There's another one called a cloud lifter. The difference being a cloud lifter is a little box. You need two XLR cables for that. One goes from the cloud lifter to your mic and the other one from the cloud lifter to your audio device. Okay, I prefer this one, especially for traveling because it just sits on the back of there and um, it's just one cable. I don't need a second cable. That's the benefit of those. They're quite good. They're quite expensive though. What are they about? 60 pounds, 70 pounds each, something like that. Yeah. Um, cloud lifters are a bit more expensive again, but they're, they're good, you know, good for these type of microphones. I think that's pretty much covered the mics. So I think from now, thanks for jumping in on this clip. And now we're going to go back to me again, back in the studio. Okay, so we're recording our audio. We've got our microphones, we've got our audio recorder, or you're taking it straight into your laptop. But one thing we mustn't ignore, and we need something to listen to our audio with. And for that, we need our headphones. For people with small heads. No, only joking. Uh, it's very important. You've got to monitor your audio. It's no good just doing interviews with a microphone in an ambient room space because you cannot hear the levels of yourself or your guest or your hosts, and you cannot hear anything else going on. So you need a decent good headphone, decent, decent good, a decent set of headphones to listen to your audio. These uh, in my kit uh, and the ones we use are Audio Technica ATH M50 Xs. Okay, they've got a separate cable which screws in the bottom. These are over ear headphones, so it does block out a lot of my ambient room noise and uh, they do fold up very, very small into a good little travel case that I've got, which keeps them protected. And of course, the other good thing headphones are useful for are listening to Podlomania Photography and Video Podcast. Did I mention that before? Yes, I think I did. But there you go, you do need headphones. Yes, you can use your Apple headphones, you can use your MP3 player headphones, but you know, all the push in the buds, whatever you want, as long as you've got a decent set of headphones to listen to your audio so that you can hear your levels and your host levels and your guests and things like that, and any other noises that may be coming through your microphone. Don't try and do it without a, a set of headphones because you'll never know what your levels are doing. So an important thing, having your headphones as well. Now, one thing to support that, if you're doing a multi-guest setup and you've got more than two, three, four people, obviously if you're using uh, either a mixing desk or an audio interface or even something like the Zoom A6 recorder, you only have one headphone out socket. So how do you get four people, four guests listening to one headphone out socket? There's a couple of ways. You can go the super cheap way, which is a headphone splitter. So one end goes into my device, my interface or my recorder that comes out of my headphone socket. And it means that, yeah, it's a 3.5. It means I can then plug five other sets of headphones into that. The only problem with that is, although I can listen to all my guests and all their levels, which is good, you've got to remember with audio, that is taking one audio signal and splitting it five ways. So it means that the quality and the volume level of that audio will depreciate a little bit. So if you've got one guest who's perhaps hard of hearing or has different headphones in and you need to adjust that volume, it means you're gonna adjust the volume if you turn it up for everybody that's plugged into that little interface. The other way around it is to use something like this. This is a little mic, uh, a little mic, a little headphone preamp. So basically what this does, you do need mains power for su supply for this, which is a bit of a pain in the backside to be honest, but this little box here, this is another Behringer unit. It's a micro amp, it's called the HA400. Basically, this will take up the four microphones, one input from your headphone out socket of your device. That then goes into there. It splits it into your four headphone outputs for all your headphones and all your users. And each one has its own headphone volume control. That's the best way to go about it. And the box is tiny, which is why it goes in our travel kit. But if you're just a couple of guests, that little thing is about five or six pounds here in the UK. Um, Amazon is a good place to get it. That thing's just fine, a little headphone splitter. Um, but if you need independent volume control, that's the kind of thing you'll need. So that's a basic rundown of my podcasting kit. Now, of course, you don't have to have any of this. You know, you can quite easily get a lapel mic that plugs into a smartphone if you wanted to. If you're a solo podcaster, you could even use that if you're on your travels and just edit your audio later. You know, software is really good nowadays. Yes, there is a difference between a 3.5 mic and an XLR mic and the quality of them, but it's still doable and still very, very usable. Just remember that. Now, out of all this kit that I've got, 
what is probably my go-to or if you are coming to me and saying oh which one should I buy should I buy a mixing desk or an audio interface or should I buy uh, you know an, uh, an audio recorder uh, which one would you recommend that would probably be my go-to out of all of these why because if it's universally brilliant I can use it in the studio I can use it as an interface straight into my into my computer I can use it as a standalone and record straight to the SD card it fits in the bag I don't have to use a laptop with it if I don't need to it can just go in my microphones and my headphones and I've got all my independent controls in there and all my levels and uh, everything on my LCD that would probably be my go-to piece of equipment would be the Zoom H6 there are different versions and different brands that is one of my favorite and it comes in its own little case which we actually don't take with us we just take this unit without all the other mics uh, and the good thing is, if you've got a lapel mic that's a jack input, you can get a 3.5 jack converter, which is like this, which turns it into an XLR, which goes straight into there. So it's a win-win. That would be my go-to piece of equipment. The one I use least would probably be the Yamaha MGX10 XU mixing desk. Okay, I don't do a lot of live podcasting and streaming, so I don't need all the special effects that are in there. So for me, my Zoom H6, my Audio Technica ATM, ATM, ATH, uh, <laughs> ATH M50X headphones. There are other versions available there as well. Sure, make some good ones as well. And uh, obviously my little my, my little headphone preamp. And of course we're using a Samsung Q2U mics for a lot of our stuff at the moment because they're so durable. And of course I use a fat head. Uh, preamp booster, signal booster over the cloud lifter. Why? Because the cloud lifter, you need an XR cable from your mic into it and one from your cloud lifter out into your interface. Whereas this one is just the same single cable, uh, which is a nice convenient way of doing it. And then finally, once you've recorded all your podcast audio that you've got, uh, then you need to edit your podcast as well. Now, some people do record straight into their computer systems and laptops through a DAW or a digital audio workstation. In other words, a piece of software that records your podcast. There are some free ones out there. If you're an Apple user, you've already got GarageBand built into your systems. Audacity, there's, that's an open source platform um, audio program that you can use and you can record all your, your audio into that. Uh, personally, myself, uh, I use Logic Pro for, for editing all our podcasting, or you can use something Adobe Audition as well. It's whatever suits suits your own needs you know it's your choice whichever one you like the interface of and all the user effects of that's it really once you get that and you pull that in you can edit that and then you obviously you get that put out but that in short is what is in my podcast bag so thanks for that request thanks for asking and i think that wraps it up for today don't you any questions from the back uh where can we find your podcast ah uh, everywhere Everywhere. Welcome to our podcast. Yeah, Podlomania. If you're interested in that photography and video podcast, you can find us on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And you can go over there. The first three episodes are up with my good friend, buddy, and co host, Jake Hicks. And uh, we've got one intro episode and two full episodes. And once again, folks, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and tick that bell for those notifications. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on episode 15.